Developing now, you're looking at a live picture of what's called Iowa's first gigabyte city in Cedar Falls, and this is where the president is now speaking about broadband, broadband competition, looking for ways to make high-speed internet more affordable and accessible. Let's listen in. We've got uh, our Commerce Secretary, Penny Pritzker, here, as well as Iowa Congressman Dave Lobsack and Attorney General Tom Miller. Hey, Tom. And uh, I was reminded by the President uh, that we have to give a shout out to a top 25 basketball team that you've got here in town. So, you know, the President was, was lobbying me about putting them in my brackets. I said, it's a little early. I, I, I got to kind of see what happens uh, second half of the season. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the Panthers are putting together a heck of a season again. Uh, and I think uh, most folks learned a few years ago that when March rolls around, you do not bet against UNI. Uh, now, it's great to be back. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, good friends. Unfortunately, uh, they're not giving me time to grab a beer uh, down at uh, the pump house this trip. Although I understand the mayor said he brought a Bud Light with me. Or, or, or for me, uh, the, the, the mayor brought a Bud Light, uh, and uh, he's trying to sneak it around Secret Service. Uh, so, uh, but obviously, it's wonderful coming back to Iowa, even during winter. In fact, especially in the cold. Yeah, these folks in Washington can't handle the cold. We know how to handle cold in the Midwest. Um, and here in Iowa, on a cold January caucus night about seven years ago, uh, we talked about change and said that uh, it was time for us to, to move this country in a new direction. And obviously, a lot has changed. Uh, I'm much grayer, for example. Uh, as a country, we fought through the worst financial crisis and recession in our lifetimes. Uh, but the American people showed a lot of resilience and resolve. And there is no doubt about it, thanks to the steps that we took early to rescue the economy, to rebuild it on a new foundation, America's coming back. You know, last year was the strongest year for job growth since the 1990s. Unemployment, <laughs> unemployment fell in 2014 faster than any year since 1984. Our businesses have created more than 11 million jobs in the last 58 straight months. That's the longest stretch of private sector job growth in American history. Since 2010, America's put more people back to work than Europe, Japan, and every other advanced economy combined. And, you know, a lot of folks talk about some of the jobs uh, are, are being created in the service sector. They're not uh, paying as much. The truth is, American manufacturing is in its best stretch of job growth since the 1990s. Manufacturing is actually growing faster than the rest of the economy. Meanwhile, America is now the number one producer of oil and gas in the world. And by the way, you're saving about a buck twenty a gallon at the pump over this time last year. So these past six years were trying, demanded a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice on everybody's part. But as a country, we have a right to be proud about what we've got to show for it. America's resurgence is real, and we're better positioned than any country on Earth to succeed in the 21st century. Now, on Tuesday, I'm going to deliver my State of the Union address. And in my speech, I'm going to focus on how we can build on the progress we've already made and help more Americans feel that resurgence in their daily lives with higher wages and rising incomes and growing our middle class. Uh, but since I only got two years in office uh, left, I'm, I'm kind of in a rush. So I didn't want to wait till the <laughs> State of the Union to share some of my ideas and some of my plans. I've been traveling across the country, rolling out some of these ideas, plans to help more families afford a home, plans to make more students can attend community college without loading up with debt, plans to make more workers find good jobs in high-tech manufacturing. And in the 21st century, 
In this age of innovation and in technology, so much of the prosperity that we're striving for, so many of the jobs that we want to create depend on our digital economy. Depends on our ability to connect and to shop and do business and discover and learn online in cyberspace. So this week I've been laying out new proposals on how we can keep seizing these opportunities in this information age while at the same time protecting our security and our privacy and our prosperity and our values. On Monday, I announced new steps to protect American consumers from identity theft and make sure that your privacy is protected. Yesterday, I spoke at the Department of Homeland Security about how we can work with the private sector to better defend American companies against cyber attacks. Today, I'm in Cedar Falls to talk about how we can give more communities access to faster, cheaper broadband so they can succeed in the digital economy. And I'm not telling you, uh, you anything you don't already know. Today, high-speed broadband is not a luxury, it's a necessity. This isn't just about making it easier to stream Netflix or scroll through your Facebook news feed, although that's fun. And you want, you know, it is frustrating if you're waiting for a long time before the thing finally comes up. This is about helping local businesses grow and prosper and compete in a global economy. It's about giving the entrepreneur, the small business person on Main Street, a chance to compete with the folks out in Silicon Valley or across the globe. It's about helping a student access the online courses and employment opportunities that can help her pursue her dreams. And that's why, through the Recovery Act, when I first came into office, we were trying to make sure that we prevented the Great Depression, but also start building some foundations for long-term growth. We built or improved more than 113,000 miles of network infrastructure throughout the country. That's enough to circle the globe more than four times. And we offered tax credits to help spur businesses to expand their networks. We've hooked up tens of thousands of schools and libraries and medical facilities and community organizations. And then we launched something we call Connect Ed, which trains teachers and spurs private sector innovation and is connecting 99% of America's students to high-speed internet. But, and this is why I'm here, we've still got a lot of work to do. Right now, 98% of Americans have access to the most basic levels of broadband, and that's a good thing. But that number doesn't look quite as good when you look at the speeds we're going to need for all the apps and the videos and all the data and f new software that is constantly coming onto market. We've got to keep pace. We've got to be up to speed. Right now, about 45 million Americans cannot purchase next generation broadband. And those are the, that next generation of broadband creates connections that are six or seven times faster than today's basic speeds. And by the way, only about half of rural Americans can log on at that super fast rate. And if folks do have good, fast internet, chances are they only got one provider to pick from. And today, tens of millions of Americans have only one choice for that next generation broadband. So they're pretty much at the whim of whatever internet provider is around. And what happens when there's no competition? You're stuck on hold, you're watching the loading icon spin, you're waiting and waiting and waiting, and meanwhile, you're wondering why your rates keep on getting jacked up when the service doesn't seem to improve. Now, in Cedar Falls, things are different. About 20 years ago, in a visionary move ahead of, ahead of its time, this city voted to add another option to the market and invest in a community broadband network. Really smart thing you guys did. <laughs> this is a really smart thing you guys did. And you've managed it right here at Cedar Falls Utilities. 
Then a few years ago, you realized that customers were demanding more and more speed. All the movies, all the increased data, inst Instagram, all, all this stuff suddenly is just being loaded up. And, and basically, you, you guys were like uh, the, the captain in Jaws, where you say, we're, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> So having already made the smart investment 20 years ago, about five years ago, you said, we got to upgrade to a fiber network throughout the city. And eventually, with the help of some federal funding, the surrounding rural areas as well. So today, Cedar Falls is Iowa's first gigabit city. Now, that sounds like something out of a Star Wars movie, <laughs> Gigabit City. Uh, here's what it means. Your network is as fast as some of the best networks in the world. There's Hong Kong, Tokyo, Paris, Cedar Falls. <laughs> right? That, that's, that's, that's the company you're keeping. You are almost 100 times faster than the national average. A hundred times faster. You can, and you can log on for about the same price as some folks pay for a fully loaded cable bundle. So today you've got small businesses like Mark's that are serving clients worldwide. Google named you the best city in Iowa for e-commerce. And what you're showing is that here in America, you don't have to be the biggest community to do really big things. You just have to have some vision, and you have to work together. And we're seeing that same kind of innovation and that same kind of energy and foresight in communities across the country. In Lafayette, Louisiana, companies are bringing jobs to the city in part because of their fast next generation broadband network. In November, the people of Yuma County, Colorado, voted overwhelmingly in favor of a community broadband network. That's in the same election where 85 percent of the folks just voted for a Republican Senate candidate. So this is not a partisan issue. It's not a red issue or a blue issue. Folks just want to know that they're at the cutting edge of this new economy. Folks around the nation want these broadband networks. They're good for business. They're good for communities. They're good for schools. And they're good for the marketplace because they promote efficiency and competition. Here in Cedar Falls, if you don't want the highest speed package, you can still choose between the Cedar Falls utilities or options like Mediacom or CenturyLink. It's not like you don't have choices. You can pick the company that offers the best service at the lowest cost for your family's needs. That's how free markets and capitalism are supposed to work. But he here's the catch. In too many places across America, some big companies are doing everything they can to keep out competitors. Today, in 19 states, we've got laws on the books that stamp out competition and make it really difficult for communities to provide their own broadband the way you guys are. In some states, it is virtually impossible to create a community network like the one that you've got here in Cedar Falls. So today, I'm saying we're going to change that. Enough's enough. We're going to change that so every community can do the smart things you guys are doing. So not long ago, I made my position clear on uh, what's called net neutrality. I, I believe we've got to maintain a free and open internet. Today, I'm making my administration's position clear on community broadband. I'm saying I'm on the side of competition, and I'm on the side of small business owners like Mark. I'm on the side of students and schools. I believe that a community has the right to make its own choice and to provide its own broadband if it wants to. Nobody's going to force you to do it, but if you want to do it, if the community decides this is something that we want to do to give ourselves a competitive edge and to help our young people and our businesses, they should be able to do it. And if there are state laws in place that prohibit or restrict these community-based efforts, all of us, including the FCC, which is responsible for regulating this area, should do everything we can to push back on those old laws. 
I believe that's what you know, stands out about America. This belief that more competition means better products and cheaper prices. We do that with just about every other product. We ought to be doing it with broadband. It's just common sense. And that's why leaders from 50 cities and towns across the country, it's a coalition called Next Century Cities, have pledged to bring next generation broadband to their cities and towns. And that's why I'm announcing a series of additional actions to support their efforts and encourage more communities to follow your lead, Cedar Falls. I'm directing federal agencies to get rid of unnecessary regulations that slow the expansion of broadband or limit competition. They're going to report back to me in six months. The Department of Commerce, Penny Pritzker, uh, who's here, uh, they're going to work to offer support and technical assistance to communities that want to follow your lead and set up their own networks. USDA, the Department of Agriculture, is announcing new loan opportunities for rural providers. And this summer, I'll host mayors from around the nation at a community broadband summit to chart the next steps that we need to take. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to clear away red tape. We're going to foster competition. We're going to help communities connect and help communities succeed in our digital economy. And the good news is we know, we know it works because of you. You guys were like the guinea pigs on this thing. You know, you took a chance and you made something happen. And you're supporting jo the jobs of the future through faster, cheaper internet. We want everybody to do that. Now I want to leave you with a story uh, of another community that has done this as well. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's an old railroad town. It was once called the dirtiest city in the nation. During the recession, they were hit harder than most places. But that did not stop them from building America's first citywide high-speed fiber network, right down the middle of downtown. It's as fast as what you guys got here in Cedar Falls. Today, a new generation of engineers and entrepreneurs have moved down to Chattanooga. Big businesses have set up shop. Volkswagen built a billion-dollar manufacturing plant. It's unleashing a tornado of innovation. The, the city's even testing out futuristic technologies like 3D holograms. And here's what their former mayor said. It's like having, it, it's like being the first city to have fire. <laughs> we don't know all the things we can do with it yet. <laughs> yet. But think about that. You know, when you're first in something, when you, when you figure something out, you're, you may not know all the applications right away, but, but that's the spirit of America, imagining what might come next. We may not always know what's right around the corner, but we know we'll figure it out as long as we're bold and we go ahead and work together. You know, we've, we've been through some very hard times. We didn't always know those hard times were coming. But we pulled together, we worked together, we relied on each other, we believed in each other, and we figured it out. We're blessed with the greatest natural resource in the world. Not corn, <laughs> but the pluck and the ingenuity and the willingness to take risks of the American people. And I'm absolutely confident if we just give Americans the tools they need, if we just help lay the foundation and allow them to access the amazing opportunities and technologies at this moment in world history, we're not just going to continue recovering from a bad recession. We're going to ignite the next generation of American innovation. And it's going to start right here in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. At the Cedar Falls Utilities, the company and the town that he's using as the backdrop to promise and pledge to make it easier to make broadband inter internet accessible and more affordable nationwide. And we want to bring in CNET editor Maggie Reardon now. Maggie, thanks for joining us. All right, we heard about Gigabit City. We heard about, you know, high-speed internet, the president showcasing this town in Iowa. Why has Cedar Falls been able to do what other towns have not, and why did they choose to do this to get the competitive edge? Well, I think a lot of communities are realizing that uh, 
faster broadband and really these very fast networks that are built on fiber uh, give them a competitive edge. I mean, you see cities um, like Kansas City. I mean, you've got Google who's going out there building these networks, um, and they chose Kansas City. And, and you've got AT&T who's even starting to, to deploy fiber directly to, to areas, and Verizon has been doing it for a while. So, you know, companies have been doing it, and I think communities recognize that when you have uh, really high-speed internet, you can attract uh, talent to those areas. And why is it that broadband has relatively limited provider options? What's taking so long, and how is the president trying to change all of this? Well, you know, it's very expensive to build out networks, and so particularly in rural areas, a lot of the the companies um, that are well established, like a Comcast or a Verizon, it's just too expensive for them to build out there. And I think that's what the, the president is trying to address with this um, initiative. You know, I think uh, a recent FCC report said that 53 percent of, of uh, rural Americans don't have access to any internet. And, that, you know, that's a lot of people. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I think that if they can do what they can to get the communities to to want to build their own networks and, and sort of strike down those barriers to doing that, they think that they can get real uh, real broadband to people who need it. All right, the president uh, briefly outlined a couple of points, saying that he wants to help clear the way in terms of regulations. What's been in the way for many of these communities? Well, there are 19 states that actually have laws on the books that make it difficult or actually prohibit local communities from building their own fiber networks. So, you know, it may be fine for uh, a company like Google, for instance, to come in there and build it, but there are a lot of municipalities like the one that he's highlighting in Cedar Falls that want to build it themselves. They have a lot of the infrastructure in the ground. Um, they have a lot of fiber already there. They just don't have a provider who's willing to put the capital up to do it. And, and so some communities want to use taxpayer money to do that. And there have been states and, and a lot of efforts a lot of this pushed by the incumbents uh, who have said, no, we don't think that that's fair. And so they've, they've set up these regulatory and state law barriers that prohibit that. And give me an idea how these communities that have taken the initiative to sort of lay the groundwork, how they are benefiting from this in terms of companies and perhaps schools in the area being able to have access to this high-speed high internet. Yeah, well, you've got you've got communities that um, you know. I think the president even mentioned in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, for example, that it's attracting new industries. You know, there are car companies that are now coming to Chattanooga. Um, it also attracts just different kinds of uh, people to that area. Like, for example, in Kansas City, I went there uh, a couple years ago just to check out what Google has been doing, and they have a whole startup scene there. And that's that's hugely important to a lot of communities and areas because, you know, if you have really high-speed internet, you don't need to have everybody clustered in, in Silicon Valley to come up with some really cool things. You can have people all over the country in, in places like Kansas City and places like Austin, Texas. And I think that's what a lot of these communities are looking for, is that edge uh, that will attract the talent there and will attract companies to, to want to base there because they have the resources that can really put them over the edge and, and get them thinking differently and, and doing different kinds of things. All right, CNET's senior editor, Maggie Reardon, thanks so much for joining us and talking about this issue. And of thanks course, you can me. keep up with this story in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starring the story for exclusive updates on the go. For now, I'm Michelle Franzen in New York.